A word that comes to mind when I think about Jesus is powerful. Kind. I think about the word peace. Loving and caring. Life because he sacrificed his life to give us ours. Is Jesus God or is God Jesus or are they the same person? What's it like being the most powerful person who ever walked on earth? What did he do on his downtime? Why does he love us so much? He's a person who loves and cares for me. My role model. A very safe person to talk to. Jesus is a friend. If I'm dealing with anything, I know I can go to him and he'll help me through it. No matter what decision we make, it almost always comes down to the same question. Does it make my life better or worse? And that's a great question. Since you and I only have one life, it makes sense that we want to get the most out of it. It makes sense that we would want everything we do to make us happier, make us more excited, or be good for us. Of course, we'd want to choose things that we think will make our lives better. And for most of us, we approach church and faith in the same way. Is it gonna be any fun? Will it make me happier? Is it worth my time? Will it make my life better? Maybe we don't ask those questions out loud, but we've probably thought them a time or two. And honestly, I totally understand why we ask those questions. And if you're asking questions like these, I want you to know that they're not bad or wrong. In fact, it's okay to ask questions about who Jesus is and what following him really means to us and why is it important when it comes to our faith. After all, we can't find the answers if we don't ask the questions, right? That's why we want you to ask because here at Hope, we believe that following Jesus can change your life for the better. And we want you to know and experience that as well. So to get some idea of what all this faith stuff really can do for our lives, I wanna look back to a time when Jesus was alive here on earth. It was a long time ago, but in his teachings, Jesus often used illustrations or examples that were a part of everyday life at the time. One of those illustrations was about sheep and their shepherds. It was a concept that everybody in that culture understood. People saw shepherds taking care of, protecting and nurturing their sheep all the time back then. So they knew that it was a shepherd's job to make sure that their sheep were safe. As he's using this illustration, Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd. Who are his sheep? We are. And according to Jesus, this means that he takes care of us, moves us where we need to go, feeds us, and helps us rest in safety. It's a nice little word picture that he had going, right? Then right in the middle of this huge teaching, Jesus made a statement. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I don't know about you, but for me, this feels like a random turn. We were just talking about sheep, and now you're telling me this terrible news about a thief. What's going on here? Well, back then, thieves were a problem. It was a real thing that someone might steal or hurt your sheep. So this illustration made sense to the audience at the time in that culture when Jesus was alive. But again, Jesus was talking about himself as the good shepherd here. And remember, we, his followers, are the sheep. So how is a thief even a part of this conversation? Well, let's take a look at how Jesus continued. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that here, Jesus is making an important point. He was showing us the difference between himself and the thief. He's saying, this is why the thief shows up, to steal, kill, and destroy, but I'm gonna tell you why I show up. Why am I here? In other words, do you know what a thief is like? Well, that's not me. And honestly, I think Jesus knew that he needed to say this because so often we don't see Jesus as the good shepherd. Instead, we're tempted to see him more as the thief. Let me explain this a little bit. We think that Jesus is all about stealing our fun. We think that following Jesus kills our relationships. We think that Jesus will destroy what we really want. We think that Jesus wants us to make choices that cause us to miss out on things in our lives. We worry that if we follow Jesus, some part of our lives will be stolen, killed, or even destroyed. We'll have to give up on our dreams. We'll have to give away everything we really want. We're gonna miss out on friends or dating people or doing things that we think are fun. We're gonna have to live these boring lives. But the point is this, when it comes to Jesus, we're all tempted to think that he wants to take something away from us. And that's why I think Jesus brought this up. He knew his followers might feel this way. He knew they'd be thinking something about him that wasn't true. So he wanted to make sure that his people were crystal clear about who he is and why he came to them. And that's why he finished with this. I have come so that they may have life and have it 
to the full. That's pretty amazing, right? In other words, Jesus was saying, I didn't come to take away your life. That's what a thief does. I'm no thief. I've come to make sure that you have life and not just any life, but a life that is full. Jesus' goal isn't for us to have less of a life. He wants to give us more life, a better life, a full life. And that's so different than what many of us think because somewhere along the way, we got the idea that Jesus wants to take something away from us, but that's actually not true. Now, does that mean that we'll get everything we want? That everyone will like us back? That we'll have a million friends or a million followers? That God will rain down Doritos from the sky so we never run out? Probably not. Does it mean that we'll never get bored? Get our feelings hurt? Feel pain? No. But it does mean that we can trust, even in difficult times, Jesus isn't trying to take anything from our lives. Instead, we can trust that he wants to lead us in a good direction. It means that we can trust that he will lead us towards more of what we really want in life. Things like more fun, better relationships, what you really want out of life, and wise choices. I think that's what Jesus is getting at in his message. He didn't come to steal, kill, or destroy any part of our lives. He came to help us have a real life. In other words, following Jesus won't make your life less. In fact, because of Jesus, we can have a life that is full. So how does this work? How do you find the more, better, fuller life that Jesus offers? I think it's simpler than we think. For some of you, I think the first step is to say yes to Jesus for the first time. Maybe you've always thought that Jesus is angry, boring, or that following him meant living a miserable life. Today, I'd like you to consider this question. If that isn't true, what would it look like for you to say yes to the person who can change your life for the better? For others of us, maybe we've already said yes to a relationship with Jesus, but we haven't experienced the life that he describes. So maybe it's time for us to say yes to things that Jesus would say yes to. So much of what Jesus leads us to do will actually make our lives better. When we make good choices or decide to serve someone else, or we spend time getting to know more about Jesus, we do that because it makes things better for us and for those around us. There are a million ways to experience this, but let's start with just one. What if this week you just said yes to serving someone else? Serving someone else can make their lives better, but it can actually make your own life better, happier, and richer as well. Serving isn't something that is a serious, no fun God thing to ask of us, right? It's something that makes everybody's life better, including yours. So what's one way that you could help someone else? You could volunteer to work with little kids. They'll love you. You could help with an elementary schooler with their homework. You're gonna be like a hero to them. Volunteer to work with elderly people at a senior home. They'll be happy to see you there. You'll be helping meet a need and potentially changing someone's life for the better. Can you imagine feeling less joy after doing something like this? Remember, because of Jesus, we can have a life that is full.